Look, I don't tighten very often, but when I do, I make it look good. Mm, nom nom nom, Graham, nom 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 nom. Okay, let's try that again. Look, I don't tighten very often, but when I do, I make it look good. Hello everyone, it's Truds here, and today we are going to tighten. And we are going tighten for one reason and one reason only. This build is totally broken. The season of the Worthy has really shown how Bungie are leaning into making the build crafting in the game more targeted, specific and rewarding. Now before we dive into the specifics, I want to say one thing. The more I delved into this build, the more it became apparent how insanely strong it is and how it kind of has a feeling of infinite branches on top of the base we build. There's so many strong options with it, so make sure to stick around as we go off down the rabbit hole with this one. Again, the support has been incredible lately, so thank you and let's keep this ball rolling. If you're new here, you can subscribe for free to support the channel and hit a rating down below too. So, we've gone through a few builds in recent weeks ranging from the new Seraph Bunker mods, reworked exotics and the seasonal artifact. For this one, we are going back into the artifact to take a look at and make use of Thunder Coil. This is a returning mod which debuted in the Season of the Undying with the launch of Shadow Keep. Thunder Coil grants bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refunds super energy on finisher final blows. It's a class item mod and it costs a neutral 6 energy which automatically gives you an indication of how strong it is but unfortunately means you can't stack it with the other great artifact mod Lightning Strikes Twice, which would be kind of nuts so I guess that's a good thing. Now anyway, this one was very strong when it first appeared and was widely used across the board. However, a number of factors have come to make this particularly potent, especially for Titans. Roll up the Dew Marchers. This exotic actually got a crazy buff with the start of the season of the Worthy. I don't think anybody thought they needed a buff, but somebody at Bungie obviously snuck this one in under the radar. For those who don't know, Dune Marchers come with the intrinsic perk, Linear Actuators. This increases sprint speed and sprinting builds up a static charge. After melee attacking an enemy, that charge will chain damage to nearby enemies. Now this counts on all melee hits, whether it's a fully charged melee ability or just your bog standard punch, shoulder charge, hammer strike or shield bash. Now this used to work just fine and it has always been a popular choice in the community anyway. However, the damage radius of the chaining ability has now been moved to a whole other postcode, with it getting a buff from 12 meters to 20 meters. Yes, 20 meters. Like I said, Dew Marchers are in a whole other postcode right now. You'll need to send your attacker a letter to let them know that you died from their melee. But hey, that's just the start here. We've got a nice solid foundation with Thunder Coil and Dew Marchers. Obviously, to make the most out of Thunder Coil, we need to pair it with the Arc Striker Titan subclass. And here, we get a whole set of abilities that got a recent buff in the new sandbox. Code of the Missile is where we are heading. Now look, like I said, I don't Titan very often, but when I do, I like to have fun. And Code of the Missile has fun written all over it. With Thunder Crash and Ballistic Slam turning you into Thick Superman, it's the only choice. The whole subclass tree had changes applied, but the main ability we are leaning into is Ballistic Slam. This is the Code of the Missile's melee ability, where after sprinting with a full melee charge, you can jump into the air and do a Hulk style smash onto your unsuspecting opponents below. The recent buff it received though increased its knockback distance significantly, as well as triggering Inertia Override, which reloads your weapon and buffs weapon damage for a short time too. So by now, you can start to see the build in all of its glory. Using Ballistic Slam with Dune Marchers into a group of enemies, whether in PvP or PvE, is highly effective. It deals huge area damage and chains to those unsuspecting nearby within the newly buffed 20 meter radius. Plus, with Thunder Coil, 
damage is increased too, making it a one shot kill to most guardians with an average resilience. Is there a group taking a capture point in control? Slam! A cluster around a heavy spawn? Slam! A fresh spawn of adds from a drop strip? Slam! This setup has got you covered. Yet still, there's more. Especially if you really want to lean into this build and maximise its efficiency and potency. First up, you really want to consider getting your strength stat on your armour as high as possible. Any good rolls of armour will be great, but you can also stack strength mods to give a plus 10 with each one. Getting your strength stat high will greatly decrease the cooldown of your ballistic slam with the magic sub 30 second cooldown your target. There's another exotic that you can add to this though, and one that is actually in a great spot in the meta right now too. Monte Carlo, the returning Destiny 1 exotic 600 RPM auto rifle. This slick looking auto rifle binds perfectly with this already top tier build. The Monte Carlo method is the intrinsic perk which reduces your melee cooldown when causing damage with this weapon and it also has a chance to fully restore your melee ability on a kill. On top of this, its Markov chain trait increases its damage output on kills with Monte Carlo and melees too. It's pretty much as full circle as it gets. So you run around and ballistic slam into a group, get a kill, then you get bonus damage on Monte Carlo or while getting bonus cooldown on your already rapid base strength stat and lo and behold, you've got yourselves one of the almighty powerful builds to take anywhere in the game right now. Plus, an added bonus to Ballistic Slam will grant super energy on hitting enemies with impact inversion, giving you a more rapid way to utilising the Thunder Crash super. After only using this for a short time, I have had huge amounts of fun. It's actually insane how quick you can get Ballistic Slam back. It's pretty much like a primary at this point as you're using it literally every other engagement. Now in PvP, players will get wise to it as a match progresses, but that's the point as you're then able to pick them off one by one in between ballistic slams. Whereas in PvE activities, you effectively come a Hulk smashing Superman by taking out waves upon waves of adds. Now honestly, in PvE you probably don't even need to use Dune Marchers, Skullfort could be an option for instant melee recharge, or even the ever broken Worm God Caress for an even greater increase to melee damage. For Warlocks out there, Dew Marchers and Ballistic Slam isn't an option, obviously, but you could use Attunement of Control's Ball Lightning Melee with Crown of Tempests as a great option. For Hunters, you'll be looking at Arc Strider, Combination Blow, or Tempest Strike for melee options paired with Liar's Handshake, or even Frosties for an even greater ability cooldown while sprinting. So now, we go into Overtime, as there's one other piece of this build that is stupidly strong in PvE. Tyrant Surge is another seasonal artifact mod which will increase your damage output significantly. That's because when you deal damage with arc melees, supers or grenades, you will instantly spawn a Warmind Cell. Now if you haven't played with the Warmind Cells, they had buffs and debuffs of all types in PvE activities. Tyrant Surge fits right in here as it can be applied to any armour piece. It does cost a neutral 6 energy, but at the expense of maybe one other mod in your build, it's a no brainer. Given that you'll be getting your Ballistic Slam almost instantly, now you get the bonus of a Warmind Cell too. These are great for dealing with the higher tier enemies, as you can add other status effects and damage mods to improve the cell's output. This is including, but not limited to, the strength of Rasputin, which costs only 2 arc energy and will grant you melee energy when you collect a warmind cell. Do you feel the synergy with this one? Because I for sure do. On top of this you can use sheltering energy. At 5 arc energy this will give you an overshield when you collect a warmind cell so you really can double down on collecting one. But for that triple double bang on modular lightning which will create a burst of chaining arc energy around you when you collect a warmind cell. You don't have to build into the arc energy mods as the void and solar ones will suppress or burn enemies respectively. Mess around with them and see what works best for you. So that's it, a pretty deep dive into the crazy things you can do with the Thunder Coil seasonal artifact mod. Let me know in the comment section below if you've used this build or experimented with a variation of it. 
Once again, the support here has been nothing short of amazing lately, so thank you very much for that. If you're new here, please hit subscribe for more Destiny 2 content and a rating down below is greatly appreciated. We've got more build videos coming up, so be sure to keep an eye out for them. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.